you'll miss the greatest fight of the year. This Marciano is another Dempsey. Why, the way he felt that that Lewis was something to see. Lewis is through for real now. He should have quit while he was ahead. What are you doing here? I thought you were going home. Well, Rocky almost knocked him out of the ring. The kid's got a punch like a 10-ton truck. He'll be the next champ for sure. Well, I better go write my story. Oh. Well, I'll write the story. But you didn't see the fight. I'll write the real story. It began obscurely back in 32 in the Black Bottoms of Detroit with a kid named Joseph Lewis Barrows and a neighborhood pal named Johnny. Man, you should have seen the kid last night. Did he give it to that other guy? Bam! Wham! And he knocked him down. And the other guy was out. Wait, Joe, let me show you how he did it. He came out up on his toes like this and flicked him with the left. And then he threw a right and then a hook. And the other guy threw a right cross and missed the kid. And the kid hardly moves off stride. Just like you didn't lose your balance when I shoved you then. You got a good sense of balance. Ain't nobody can knock you off your feet. Man, you're too big. Wait a minute, Joe. I want to show you a picture of the kid. Just a skinny old boy, not a big boy like you. You could be a better fighter than him. You could even earn more money. And I know a guy that could teach you in hardly no time at all. And for only 50 cents a lesson. 50 cents? I ain't got no 50 cents. You mean Professor Watkins teaches you for nothing? Mama give me the money for him. Your ma wouldn't want to do nothing dishonest, would she? She wouldn't want the professor to get money he didn't earn, now would she? Trying to teach me? He earns it. Suppose you don't show up. He can't earn it then, can he? I'll show up. I'm going there now. Now hold up, Joseph. Ain't no reason you gotta go just because you started out. We can get derailed somewhere. No, my mom will be the death. Well, I guess a boy big as you that's scared of his ma be scared to get hit by a man, all right. I ain't scared of nobody. Well, come on, then. Let me introduce you to the man. Call it, boy. Heard you want to be a fighter, huh? Yes, sir. Yeah. It's a tough game, you know. You think you can take it? I'm try. Let me see your hand. Let me see that one. Look pretty strong. Go on the back and put some stuff on it and see how you look on the floor. Put that fill over there, will you? Snap that jab. Snap that jab. Put your hand all the way down. Okay. Put your hand out. Let me see how you can. Not like that. Like this. Bend over a little bit. Just like that. See? Now, jab in this hand. Not like this. This way. Hold your hand out. Let me show you what I'm doing. See? Snap it. You see what I mean? I'll do it again. That's it. Now, let me see this hand right behind it. Fast my hand back. No. A little bit faster than that. No, no, like this. You see, you stick me. Fast. That's it. And then jab again. Let me see you jab again. Now. Go ahead. Stick it. Couple times. Double up on it. That's good. See? Fast right hand behind it. Now stick the left hand out. Stick like you mean it. That's it. Stick a couple times. Fast right hand. Let's go. That's it. Nice. Stick again. See if you can bring that hook back right after that right hand. That's it. Right back sticking. That's right. That's right hand. Let's go. Let's go. Hey, Joe. You forgot that fiddle there, buddy. Jab now you come with the right hand. Jab him again. As you see now you got to hit with that right hand. Now you bring the you drop the left hand. You got to bring it up a little higher. See now I see you jab again. Go ahead, jab. 
No, no, no. You, well, you got to wait till after you jab. Then you count over the punch. So you can't muff the punch right in midair. Now jab him again, Joe. No. See how you do Like this. Can't you do like this? And bring it right back here. He can't, he can't hit you over this as long as you got this hand like this. Now jab again. Hi, Mom. You and I have a business conference to hold. Now, Joseph, these are hard times. You know that. You know what it means to pay 50 cents a lesson for violin lessons. You know how hard it was for you to get that job at the factory. Well, for six weeks now, you've been coming home with a black eye, a cut lip, or a puffed up hand. And today, Professor Watkins comes to tell me that you haven't been to him in all that time. And now we find your name in the newspaper as a prize fighter. Semi-finals, Friday night. Joseph Lewis Barrow. Fair prospect. Well, Joseph. Mom, I didn't steal the money, Mom. I use it for business, Mom, and I'll pay it all back. But I'm learning something. I'm learning something that'll make us all rich. You'd be proud of me, Mom. You mean you have to learn to be a fighter? Yes. Where are you learning? In the gymnasium. I got promoted out of beginner's class in just two weeks. My shorter Lennon is training me himself. He says I'm his proudest pupil. Are you sure in your heart this is what you want to do, son? I know it's the thing I can do best. You must promise me that now that you're in this thing, you'll give it all your thought and strength. If you're going to do it, you've got to do it right. I do it, Mom. And I'll get that to you and I'll make you proud of me, Mom. I'll give you all the things for you, for the family, everything. Or maybe that's when it really started with Joe's mother on the porch when she said, okay. Carrying a cardboard suitcase, one change of clothes, and the family Bible. They weren't hard enough. Well, I got lucky tonight, but you'll do better next time. There's not going to be a next time for me, Joe. What you mean? No more fighting with my hands for me. I'm going into a different kind of fight game. I take my state bar exam next month. Joe, I'm going to be a lawyer. Are you kidding? <laughs> what do you want to do in life, Joe? Well, Arthur, I'd like to be the best fighter in the world. You keep hitting as hard as you did tonight, and you'll make it. Hey, Arthur, when you pass this law stuff and become a lawyer, I'd like you to be my lawyer. <laughs> All right, Joe. I'll consider myself retained. Thank you. Joe won the Intercity Amateur title, then the National Amateur Light Heavyweight Championship. Now he was ready to turn pro. The place was a Southside gym in Chicago. The year was 1934. His trainer, Jack Blackburn, pound for pound, one of the greatest fighters who ever lived. Mr. Blackburn? I'm Joe Lewis. Mr. Rockford sent me to you, Mr. Black. I'm Blackburn. That's Black over there. Hey, Julian. Yeah? Time. 
Mr. Black, Joe Lewis. Well, hello. We've been expecting you. Come with me. Hey, Joe. You've been carrying that bag in the same hand all the time? Yes, Mr. Black, man. Come back here. Move it to the other hand. A bag can pull you off balance. Use two hands. Let the bag work for both hands. The bag is something heavy enough to exercise you. Yes, sir. And if you're smart, you'll do what he tells you. In the ring and out. Okay, Chapman. Come on. You know you're off balance. Keep that right foot back of the left. All the time. See? If I can't push you off balance, it's harder to knock you off balance. Remember that. Balance. The secret of a great vibe. Balance. Yes, sir. Balance. but it needs work you know. Now you try. In. Now look to the body. Keep your right hand up so you don't get hit with the right. Chappy, not good as Joe Gans, but pretty good for you. Mr. Blackburn? Now you call me Chappie. Chappie. Okay. Chappie. Please. Joe came home to Detroit eight months and 16 KOs later. That night, two men from New York also came to Detroit, Jimmy Johnson and Mike Jacobs. They both wanted to sign Joe. They found him in the Frog Club, and so did I. Hello, Mr. Jacobs. 
Captain again. Glad to see you. Joe Lewis. Is he going with you or Johnson in the garden? That's what I came to find out. Come on over to my table. We'll get the answer together. Which one do you want? Jacobs or Johnston? I'll take Johnston, the garden guy. He's closer. Well, Joe, you know what we're trying to do. Both of these men have made offers. All we can do is get both offers and try and decide what's best. They both have good stories, too. But maybe it's you who ought to decide. Anyway, here we go. says he'll open Madison Square Garden to us, but he makes a condition. Jacob says he has the ballparks all tied up and can do more for us as an independent. But what's the condition? We have to do things his way. He'll make the matches for Joe, the matches he sees fit to make. Does that mean handcuffs? I don't think so. How's the sound so far, Chappie? Marva this is the Joe Lewis. I'm happy to meet you, Mr. Lewis. We've heard such wonderful things about you. Thank you. Are you the Detroit girl? No. I live in Chicago. I'm just here for a visit. Where about in Chicago? I'm in the book. Johnson says he'll make us a million dollars. What else? Something one of the boys said. That we got to remember Joe's a colored fighter. And as a colored fighter, he's got two strikes against him already. What did Jacob say? Jacob says he'll make Joe champion. Can he do it without the garden? I don't know. Well, which one do we go with, Chappie? We'll go with the man that'll make us champion. Chappie? Joe, meet Mr. Jacobs. We're with you, Mr. Jacobs, all the way. You made a good choice, Joe. Tad McGill, newspaper man, nice guy. How are you? Fine, Tad. Know something, Chappie? We're gonna have a lot of fun with that third strike. Joe was already a drawing card. They got him five fights in 25 days, then sent him on to New York for his first big time fight with Primo Canaro. We all came down to cover him at Penn Station and went along when he delivered a letter from Mayor Kelly of Chicago to mail the Guardian. It was a big day for Joe, but not so big he forgot a girl back in Chicago. Yes, can you make this up? Well, I think so. Miss Marva Trotter, 5220 Concord Street, Chicago, Illinois. Arrived New York to fight Carnera next week. 
Going to gym to work out. Have to box six rounds today. No road work tomorrow. Raining. Miss you, Joe. May I have your last name and your address for reference, please? Joe Lewis, Pompton Lakes, New Jersey. Ah, uh, yes, of course. Joe found out what they meant by the saying, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. Primo was big and he was game, but Joe got to him by the sixth and it was all over. Listen to me. Don't say a word till I'm finished. Now, we've been going out together now for quite a bit. And it's about time you know how I feel about you. A man can't always live in training camps and hotels. He's got to get out and meet other people. Not fighting people. People like you. I love and I want to marry you. Now, if you don't love me, you tell me so. Do you love me? I can only say it like that. Dempsey hit me from there? <laughs> <laughs> no. Then he won't bother me.
Mike Jacobs sent me those IOUs you signed. What on earth did you need with all that money? Some fellas in Detroit. We got a business... business, uh... Do you mean a business project? Yeah, that's the word. Several million people live in Detroit. Sometimes I think every one of them has borrowed money from you, Joe. I told you. It's a business project. But I was under the impression you're going to check some of these projects with us. But it's friendly business. With friends. You're getting rid of money pretty fast, son. You can't keep it up at this rate. Don't worry, Arthur. If I need some more money, I'll get it from Uncle Mike. Katie Joe was feeling too good by now, too cocky. 26 starts and 26 wins. Maybe you couldn't blame him if you wrapped oranges for a dollar a day. Hi, Dan. Hi, Joe. Hi, Javi. Be with you in a minute. Ah, don't worry. Where are you going? I'm going with Mr. McGee to play golf. You don't watch out, that old son's gonna boil the strength right out of you. You losing weight too fast now. I like golf. Come on, Dan. We can call the game off if it's bad for him, Chuck. Come on, Ted. Joe, as you know, you've been chosen by Ring Magazine as the Boxer of the Year. You've been selected not only because of your accomplishments inside the ring, but also because of the fine sportsmanship and conduct you've displayed at all times. Congratulations, Joe, and good luck. Thank you, George, and I'll do my best to live up to this. Well, I guess it's time to cut the cake, Joe. Remember, you get the first piece.
Don't do it wrong, Chappie. You're already done. Chappie. Tim's coming up. Yeah, good right hand. Good right hand, Scott. Good right hand. What happened, son? He beat me, Mom. Did you do your best? I didn't do my best before the fight. Joe, that punch he hit you with in the fifth, the foul, was that the big punch? He beat me fair. There's a lot of trouble in Harlem tonight. Gangs picking fights, turning over taxi cabs. It wasn't good. And I always said that if I ever did anything to make anybody ashamed of me, I'd want to die. Well, one thing I can say about Chappie, he never makes the same mistake twice. Look, nobody got killed. We just got set back a little, that's all. What we gotta do now is start afresh. Make up for that time we just lost. So you all got set back a little. Now you gotta make up for lost time. Lost time. You don't know the meaning of the word. Look at him. Nobody got killed, you say. How do you know? Were you in the ring? Was it your face on the floor? Joe was my husband. He belongs to me. He's not gonna end up like everybody else. Caught and bruised. Mom. Big. Just a few more easy fights, that's what you said. An old fighter like Schmeling. Joe, can't you see what's happening? Honey, I've got to make it good to the people who counted on me. Counted on you? Counted on the money they make on you. What about me? What about us? Who's counting on that? Where do we stand? What about our future, Joe? Well, this isn't the time to talk about that. What better time than now? Look at yourself. What will these people mean to you when all this is over? And what do you mean to them? Why don't you leave him alone? Better still, why don't you leave us alone? How much of him do you want? Joe, we're losing something. Whatever it was we had, we're losing it. I don't know if we ever had. It isn't just a spite. It's us. And now for the headlines in sports. Max Schmeling, the former heavyweight champion, arrived here late this afternoon on the Zeppelin Hindenburg. The German boxer who knocked out Joe Lewis last June 
informed reporters that German track and field stars in the recent Olympics all told him that they had been inspired to greater efforts by his victory over Lewis. Schmeling said, quote, the Fuhrer's heartiest best wishes accompany me to America, unquote. The former champion also said that a... I offered Schmeling $300,000 for a return fight, and he refused it. Of course, he'll only fight Braddock for the championship. So let him. He'll only have to fight me afterwards. But the thing is, Joe, we don't believe that he'll hold still long enough for another shot. He's got to. It's only fair. Joe, it's not a question of being fair. Schmeling can't take a chance on losing to you. Hitler couldn't go for that. If he wins the championship, they'll never stop yelling about Aryan supremacy. They'll freeze that title so cold, nobody will get a crack at it. Unless some bum of their own. There's got to be a way. I've got to have one more chance at him. Can't let one mistake ruin my whole life. I won't let my people down. You hear what he said? Calm down, Chappie. There's got to be a way. There is. I'll call my lawyers and then we'll talk with Jimmy Braddock. Just rolled the Braddock fight is on. Dig right in, Chad. Every trainer don't start until tomorrow. This was it for Joe. He'd come a long way for a 23-year-old. A crack at the champ. 50,000 fans turn out to pack Comiskey Park. Braddock was a popular champion. It was the first heavyweight title match in Chicago since Tunney and Dempsey had fought it out 10 years earlier.
Congratulations, Joe. Thanks, Nick. We got lucky. <laughs> You're the heavyweight champion of the world. Not yet, I'm not. What do you mean? None till I beat Smellin. Gentlemen, we come to the highlight of the evening. Accompanied by the Ellis Larkins trio, the internationally famous songstress, Miss Anita Ellis. finishing Joe no later than the fifth round. And so that's what's got me worried. And that's why I want to hire Manny Seaman to help me with him. Trouble is, I'm like a school teacher with Joe. I'm always after him. I need somebody to suit him down. This time, Chappie don't need no discipline. Okay. Let's have a talk with Seaman. Ask him in. Chappie needs help. Roxy, there's one thing about Chappie. We don't have to worry. He knows what he's doing. Mr. Ralph Burr, Mr. Black, Mr. Mandy Seaman. How do you do? Nice to know you. Have a seat, please. Chappie here seems to think you can be of some help to us with Joe. We know you trained Benny Leonard and five other world's champions. I hope I can do you some good with the big fella. 
All right. See what you can do. Okay. Lots of luck. To tell you the truth, Manny, I've been having one of my bad spells lately, and I sometimes don't feel up to working right. When do we stop? I don't know if I told you I got a box. What do you think? The trouble is he's too tight. Too tense. Yeah. If he keeps going like this, he's going to sweat himself out and leave the real fight here in the gym. He's pressing too hard. He's too anxious. Manny, I wish there was some way we could loosen him up, relax him. But when a boy is young, it's hard for him to relax before a big fight. I remember my first fight with old Sam Langford. I was training hard. Sam Langford. Maybe that's our answer. Old Sam. There you go, man. Just an old fighter. Nobody but reporters allowed in this camp. How'd you get in? Oh, Jack Blackburn brought me in. Oh, well, I got things to do. So long. I said, sit down, boy. If you don't sit down, I'll have to get up. And if I get up, I'll have to go lick that old Jack Blackburn again. You lick Chappie? That's something I got to see. I can lick him all right. Licked him four times. Sit down, son. Nobody ever licked Chappie four times. You wait till I tell him what you said. No, nobody has to tell him. He's right there now, listening. I don't see him. He's not there. He's there, all right. You don't have to see him. I can feel that skinny old tricker. <laughs> I ought to be able to. Hi, Sam. Good day, Mr. Blackburn. Chappy, you listen good to what old Sam Langford has to tell you. Sam Langford. But Chappie, he says he, he licked you four times. Sam, you know you never licked me. Four times you tried it, and four times it was a draw. Now, three of those times you I... You know I licked you, Chappie, four times. Don't go lying to this young boy, Chappie. Sam, you know you never really licked me. No? You want me to get up and lick you again? I say good day to you. There you go, Chappie. Sam, how'd you lick Chappie? Huh? Oh, yeah. Well, the uh, first time was in New Orleans, see? I hit him with Bess. And then I hit him with Sue. What did he do? Then, <laughs> then he knocked me flat down. Did he knock you out? No, not me, never. He knocked me down. I sat there a minute. I looked up, and there he was, standing right there over me. I said to him, calm. Don't go away, young man. I'll be up there to see you in a minute. But you beat him. Of course I beat him. You called it a drug. What happened the next time? Well, the uh, next time was one of them old-time finish fights. I wanted to figure some way to get old Jack mad before the fight. So I uh, come into the ring carrying a big lunch basket. Sure enough, old Jack sent a referee in some second order to find out what I was doing bringing all that stuff into the ring. So I said, well, it's a finish fight, see? Don't know when I'm going to finish, so I brought my lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Did that old Blackburn get mad at that? What happened? Fought all day. Another draw. But you licked him. Of course I licked him. Licked him again. They called it a draw. 
What happened the last time? Oh, yeah, well, uh, uh, nothing much happened that time. But how did it come out? Uh, it was one of them no decision fights, see, and, uh, <laughs> well, to tell you the truth, son, that's the one fight that uh, he might have won, maybe. You're a good boy, son. Got nothing to worry about. Spelling scamp at Nepodak. He gave me quite a statement. Sit down, Terry. Have some dogs. Yes, I had a very interesting conversation with him. Yeah? Tell you what he said. He said, having beaten you once, you'll have an inferiority complex that you'll never be able to shake off. You will see him again? Yeah, I'll be seeing him. upon you men now of the terrific responsibility you have in this ring tonight. Not besides the unseen audience that is listening to this, huh, but this great and enthusiastic crowd that have come, come out here and expect to see one of the greatest fights they've ever witnessed. There you go, champ. his handlers, time, distance, and the demands of an awestruck public came between them. ago when you were coming back to take me to dinner. I'm sorry, honey. I couldn't help it. Seems like no matter what I want to do, there's always something I've got to do. Joe, how long can we go on like this? It won't be long, honey. We'll be together and we'll have so much money we'll be set for life. A fighting can't last forever. I want to make sure I've got a few good, sound investments so you can have what you want. It's you I want, Joe. The other things mean anything without you. I'm afraid of what's happening to us. Joe, we've had plenty of time to think. Nights like tonight, days when you're gone, I know what it takes to do what you're doing. It's not easy, and I'm proud of you. Six years of loneliness, Marva sued for divorce. Joe didn't know about courts or subpoenas, but he did instinctively what more husbands might do to settle arguments. 
working on me again. Go along with Manny, son. I don't think I could make it up them ring steps. Come on, Chappie. Make your promise. You'll only have to walk up those steps once. Okay, we go. Chappie does it. No. You talk to him lately? Yeah. Talked to him on the phone yesterday. Sounds pretty weak. But he'll be all right. He's got to be. Sure. Well, might as well get set. Congratulations, Joe. It was a great fight. How do you feel? We feel pretty good. We had another lucky night. Were you in trouble at any time? Well, at times, but he's a good fighter. Joe, this is being shortwave to our troops all over the world. And since you've donated your first Army relief, I'm sure all the boys in uniform would like to hear a word from you. Well, I'm glad I was able to do what I could. Can I say something, President? This microphone is yours, champ. I hope you're satisfied, champ. There you go, Chappie. There you go. In 42, Joe left Uncle Mike and signed with Uncle Sam for $21 a month. And he made a new kind of appearance at Madison Square Garden. It was a Navy relief show, a night of stars with celebrities from Broadway and Hollywood. Walter Winchell called Joe up from the audience and presented him to the people. I guess none of us will ever forget the short, simple speech he made. I'm only doing what any red-blooded American would do. We are going to do our part, and we will win. Because we're on God's side. traveled more than 50,000 miles doing morale work, talking to other GIs, fighting and refereeing for them and putting on exhibitions. He covered the 48 states, England, France, Italy, Alaska, and the Aleutians. Like several million other men, he came home to stay and to see his daughter, Jackie, already grown into a little lady. See you 
We loved you, Leonard. Did you have a good trip? Oh, wonderful. Mm. You love Daddy? How much? is, Joe, that most of the money is gone. You'll never be in want, of course. There'll always be enough for you and your children. But the big money is gone with the big years. You mean I'm broke? Not in the true sense of the word, Joe. But for you, the way you're used to living and spending money and giving it away. That day is over. You've got to settle down and realize... We've been through all that before. Tell me about this tax money I owe. today, so you can ride back tomorrow with us for Jackie's birthday party. Honey, I didn't call you about that. You see, I haven't much time before the fight. You wouldn't dare disappoint Jack. But honey, if I don't get in shape, I'll disappoint a lot of people. Joe, what if we sold everything? Could we meet the tax then? Would you cancel your fight? No. Then we'd have nothing left. We'd have each other. We got that now. Have we? Joe, I don't understand you anymore. It isn't just me. You have a daughter now. She'll never be three years old again. But honey, I can't break train to come to a party with a bunch of kids. But this is your daughter. But I'm a fighter. You're a father, too. Well, let's go, Joe. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Here we are at ringside waiting for the main event, which, as you all know, is for the heavyweight championship of the world. The much-discussed return match between the challenger, Billy Kahn, and the champion, Joe Lewis. Say, Manny. Yeah, Joe? You ever thought what it's like to be the best? The best in what you do? Sometimes I've thought about it. Sometimes a lot. Like two hands. Never could hold a fiddle. But I could punch. Hold oh, still a minute, will you, champ? That's what I mean, Manny. Champ. That's the best. People watching you. All the time watching you. You get on the elevator, you get watched. You step out of line, they don't understand. Not when you're the best, they don't. Too many people counting on you. Been the best a long time, Joe. Yeah. A long time doing the things you sometimes don't want to do. And then again, not being able to do the things you do want to do. Like neglecting your wife. Because she can have part in the work that makes you the best. Like thinking out everything you say before you say it. So nobody can call you big-headed. You've been doing it a long time now, Joe. No complaints. So long, that's all on my mind. Names, places I've been, 
people I've been with. Go on, Joe. Talk it out. That's it, man. I can. You and Chapel are the only one I ever said this, mister, outside of Marvin. There's something I got inside, something I can't let out about. Now, look, son. You've been away a long time. You get a chance to look at things from the outside. You can't always put the pieces together right away. But you're back, champ. You're back to stay. Then there's an other thing all the time. What other thing? The stuff about two strikes. That makes it even tough for Manny to be the best. Because if I make one bad move, it doesn't only hurt me. It hurt lots of people. You're a big man, Joe. I keep thinking I'm using my three strikes by now. Yeah, I know. Chappie told me about that a long, long time ago. There's one thing you never heard him tell. He told me. Chappy told you some secret? He said he figured the way you acted, you earned those first two strikes back. <laughs> that Chappy. He never allowed room for mistakes. You know, man, he built me hard two or three times. I guess he had good calls. How's that feel, Joe? There you go. Are you ready? Ready? He's been ready all his life. Hi, man. What are you doing up so late? Mom asleep? Are you all right? Sure. Let me see. I heard it over the radio. The way it sounded, I thought you were hurt. Billy wasn't pulled in. Sure you're all right? Sure, darling. Stop worrying. Go to bed. Good night, darling. isn't inside. She went out? She's gone home. To Chicago. Chicago? To get a divorce. You have some objections. No objections. his debts, Joe fought exhibitions from coast to coast through Central and South America for the next two and a half years. Finally, he made the announcement all his friends had been waiting no, to no, hear. No. Hello, boys. Hi. Boys, I got news for you. You listen to Arthur. I promised my mother tonight, win, lose, or draw. After tonight, this is my last fight. So as of now, I'm retired. Well, that is good. Right, I'm going to get out of here. Gee, Joe, you don't know how glad I am. <laughs> Hi, man. I'm sorry I'm late. How are you, champ? Hi, Tad. Hi, Sam. Hi, Tad. Joe and I were just cutting up a few old jackpots. <laughs> How's your golf game? Oh, I'm still slicing it. Can't break 90. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to see me about, Tad? Well, there's something I wanted to talk to you about, and I thought Sam might like to hear it, too. Thank you, Tad. There's a lot of talk around, Joe. Talk? What kind of talk? About you coming out of retirement? 
Word that they're going to match you with as a Charles. People always talking. Feel no mind. Well, I'd rather say it to you than have you read it in my column. If I don't write it, somebody else will. If you're thinking of coming back, Joe, don't do it. Maybe I got a good reason to come back. Yeah, the boys wouldn't like to see you try. I'm not worried. Why should they? Because they're your friends. And because they don't think you can win. The people want to see you stay up on top where you belong, Joe. There's lots of things you could do as the retired and undefeated champion. Keep it that way. Okay. I said it. I'll have a cup of coffee, huh? You know what champions say to you now? But I'm a fighter, Sam. The only way I know how to make money is to fight. The man's giving you good advice. Better advice than most fighters get. Better advice than I ever got. You won't pay no mind. How do you know? I know you, son. Sam was right. Joe tried to come back. They matched him with Ezra Charles. It was Charles all the way. We sat at ringside, watching the remembered precision of Joe's fists fail and go. And then it was October. Joe was to meet a 28-year-old from Brockton, Massachusetts, unbeaten in 37 fights. A kid named Rocky Marciano. How come you assigned me to cover the fight at the Garden tonight? You haven't missed the Lewis fight in years. I don't feel so good. Virus? After all, it's only another heavyweight fight. And this kid couldn't last two rounds with Lewis in his prime. Joe's past his prime. Feel like bucking the crowds tonight, Mr. McGinn? I get nervous in crowds. You're a good friend of Lois, Mr. McGinn. Is he in shape? Warm this up, will you? Yes, sir. good for a guy his age. Thanks, Manny. I'd 
so tonight I saw the last fight in the career of one of the greatest fighters of all time. There are none among us who will not write finis to the end of an era. Those of us who have come the full road with Joe Lewis. From an open-faced cabin in an Alabama cotton patch. From the early days in Detroit. Through the years when no man but Schmeling ever stood over him for the long count. Those who watched him grow a taciturn boy into a manhood he made rich with his great goodwill and deep humility. Those among us who saw in his rise a bright and permanent hope for all kids who start on back streets. Those who love him and those who know him as a credit to the human race. Joe lost his wife, lost his title, lost his money, lost his beloved chappy. But out of it all, he found himself. And from me, who knows him better than most, I can see a beginning, not an end. And from all of us tonight, champ, good luck. <laughs>